welcome young and old, gay and straight, married, single, bisexual, transgender, welcome. People of all colors, cultures, and abilities, welcome. Noisy, wiggly babies and children of all ages, welcome. Rich and poor, powerful and weak, believers and questioners and questioning believers, welcome. Welcome all you who seek God's graceful, open-hearted love and the beautiful new world that love makes possible. Welcome, children of God. Good morning, beloved of God. Today is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Indeed, welcome to the Kent United Church of Christ, an open and affirming congregation striving to live out God's good news, where we boldly proclaim that whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Next Sunday is Accessible to All Sunday, which is who we are. Our director of faith formation and Jay Walkers will be leading the service. Then after worship, there will be a special second Sunday meal, an Indian feast, to support our community outreach meals. So please do plan to attend. So this was in the Record Courier's sound off. On Friday, I attended the wonderful annual rummage sale at the Kent United Church of Christ. I took some time off of work to attend because it's so much fun. Sadly, someone walked away with my bag of treasures at the checkout before I had a chance to pay. I was so disappointed. Also, the church was not paid for these treasures. So if you were that person, please, please return the bag to the Kent UCC. No questions asked. I would be so grateful. We may now receive our offerings, gifts, and tithes. Is that not beautiful? And in sound off, which I have a, I, I don't read normally out of principle, but that was worth sharing. All that to say, a huge, huge thank you to everyone who is involved in our legendary rummage sale. Our efforts raised, yes. Your efforts raised over 6,000, actually 6,700, and more to come as we wrap up the final tally. And of course, these funds will be raised for local outreach and mission programs of our church and our wider community. So thank you to all of you to, um, for making this all happen. Please join me as you are able, rise and, and for the call to worship. On this day, we are not a single congregation, but part of a global church everywhere, every place. On this day, we share not just a sacrament, but a feast from every time, every place of faith. On this day, God's people gather in house churches and cathedrals, and on sandy beaches and under towering trees. On this World Communion Sunday, we remember we are, we are part of the worldwide body of Christ, united at the table of our Lord. Let us worship our God. A reading from the Gospel of, of John, the sixth chapter. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread I will give you for the life of the world is, in, is my flesh. The Jews then sputter, sputted around among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Verily, truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day for my fle flesh is true food, and my blood is, tr is true drink. Those who eat... Wait. 
Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood a bit in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me down, and I live of the, f of the f Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the, ones, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. Here ends the reading of, from God's word. Praise be to God for our children and for our youth and for us as a whole body this morning on this World Communion Sunday. Well, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke's Gospels, otherwise known as the Synoptic Gospels, Jesus shares the Passover meal, his Last Supper, with his disciples before his crucifixion. Synoptic comes from the Greek word meaning seeing all things together, referring to the way Matthew, Mark, and Luke outline the life, passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus in a similar way. There, these are the stories that we know so well. These are the stories of our faith, describing the life and ministry of Jesus. But John's gospel is distinctly different. This gospel that opens with these stunning yet perplexing words, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Unpack that. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. You see, John's gospel is poetic inviting the reader to scratch beneath the surface and dig for the deeper meaning. John's gospel cautions us, most of all, to not take things too literally. <laughs> so be forewarned. John provides a completely different perspective on the Eucharist as well. But it is not included in his narrative of the Passion. And even though we do not meet in the upper room in John's gospel, Surrounded by Jesus' disciples for the Passover meal on the eve of his death, John's account is no less biblical. In fact, it offers us a beautiful biblical vision for what it means to receive communion. Here Jesus says, as Noah just read, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Our logical minds may wonder, how can bread live? How did it make its way all the way down from heaven? Visions of wonder bread falling from the sky fill my head. <laughs> or scenes from a humanitarian disaster with food aid dropping from planes to those in desperate need below. Or most likely, of course, this is a reference to the manna from heaven. The Israelites were given by God during their 40 years of wandering through the desert. Manna which literally means, what is this? <laughs> that is the literal translation of manna. What in the heck is this stuff? That's the original superfood, of course, the true wonder bread of the Hebrew Bible, which sustained the Israelite people until they got to the promised land. But even manna, that strange, spongy substance somewhat like bread, which allowed them to survive, to make it through the desert. Even that manna couldn't save the Israelites from death. Enter Jesus, who proclaims, whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Wow. This is no mere manna. This is life itself, and not just life in the here and now, but life eternal. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Shall we take Jesus at his word? Hear this good news. This bread offers life everlasting and life in abundance here on earth. Really listen to Jesus' invitation this morning from the communion table when he says, 
take and eat, for this is my body given for you. Take and drink, for this is my blood given for you. Given for you so that you may be filled. Take and eat and fill up with goodness. Fill up with peace. Fill up with love. Fill up with healing. Drink it all in. Drink in all that love. Take me in so that you will be filled with all that is good and true. There are no alternative facts at the Lord's table. <laughs> Take me in so that I may abide in you, reside in you, take residence in you head to toes so that you will be my body here on earth. For the bread that I will give, is for the life of the world, and that is my flesh. Now, don't be confused by all this talk of flesh. Remember, John's gospel is one of metaphor and poetry. The flesh refers to Jesus, the divine logos, the word of God who came into being at the very beginning, the word that came to live among us, the word that came to pitch his tent and live in our neighborhood, as the literal Hebrew would be translated. God incarnate, the word made flesh is Jesus the Christ, whom God sent to us as flesh and blood so that we could experience him with all our senses, so that we would get it so that we would have something concrete to go by. This is why we reenact the Last Supper at the Lord's table when we share communion. We need something concrete, don't we? We need the elements, the bread and the juice, to get it. So we can see them and touch them and smell them and taste them and listen to the story once again. So we remember, God knew, God knew we needed flesh and bones so we would really get who God is. This is why John's narrative describes Jesus saying to his opponents, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. In other words, don't rely on your own mortal devices. Rely on me. Rely on me. I am your God. And you're not alone. You don't need to take all this on by yourself. Take me in, Jesus says, and I will give you life and life will pulse through your veins and your heart and through your mind and out your mouth. And not only that, but those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will have eternal life, and I will raise them up on that last day. In other words, in the receiving of communion, you are ingesting all that is good and nutritious and wholesome and true and divinely healing, not only for the living of these days on earth, but you are ingesting life everlasting. This is why we boldly proclaim upon your death that death does not have the final word. You have been raised. If Christ abided with you here on earth, most certainly Christ will raise you up with him to abide with him eternally. Sisters and brothers in Christ, this is God's gift to the world. The invitation Christ offers us to gather at his table to eat the bread and drink the cup, symbolizing his body and blood, is a gift to us. It is Christ's gift to the whole world, 
And therefore, it is our gift to the world to extend this invitation of Christ to all. Jesus said, the bread I give is for the life of the world. The whole world, not just for you, not just for me, not just for those of us gathered here today, not just for those who need redeemed, who approach the table with hesitation and remorsefulness and doubt, not just for us in the United States or for us in the United Church of Christ only. No, the bread Jesus gives is for the life of the world. Today we celebrate World Communion Sunday. And today we remember that we are but one small body, part of the worldwide body of Christ. And we will ingest the body of Christ as one body here in this place and across the globe. In a world of distrust, violence, and division, there is no greater act of resistance, no better way to connect and remind our country and our world that we, as the body of Christ, are united. So take and eat and fill up with goodness, fill up with peace, fill up with healing, fill up with love, and then go feed the world with all that Christ has fed you. You have taken and eaten, you have taken and drank, now you have been filled with goodness and peace and healing and love. So go now with all that Christ has fed you as his body and feed the world. Amen.